You know, it's funny. Uh, I gave you that little talk yesterday about pluralization of volcano, volcanoes, and uh, said that pretty much arrived at the conclusion that it was OS. So I'm uploading Tuesday's video, and uh, spell checker was either on YouTube or D2L. Uh, insisted on putting an E in it. So, who the hell knows how to spell volcanoes? But, I suppose Webster's ought to. Volcano. O E S or O S. See, I'm vindicated. Okay. It is either or. Did one of the vice presidents get into a thing about that and he misspelled potatoes? It either has an E or doesn't have an E. It was probably before your guys. It might have been Dan Quayle. Anywho. So, we left off yesterday talking about, the other day, talking about uh, things you could make out of lava. And basically lava in general. Now, we just acknowledged that there were the three flavors or three chemistries of, of lava that we talk about in here. Um, I didn't go back through and reiterate all the chemical stuff. All right, if you want to remind yourself what the differences are in them, look at the igneous rock slides again. But we really don't get into it, you know, that too horribly much anymore. So what was the second thing that came out of volcanoes? We had lava, and then what? Gases. Gases is definitely one of them, but that's not the one where I'm segueing to, unfortunately. Gases, and what was the third thing? Pyroclastic, Pyroclastic material. Bada bing. All right, thank you guys for that. I just paused momentarily to add some pictures to this presentation I've been meaning to for a long time. So, pyroclasts. Um, when we talk about pyroclasts in here, they, uh, we talk about three sizes. All right, they're very generic. Um, but three sizes, ash, cinder, with a C, and then block or bomb. Bomb with a B. I've been very careful to say that. Years ago, somebody raised their hand and said, did you say bomb? I'm like, yes, that's where bombs come from. Volcanoes. No. Oh, students. Ash, cinder, block, and bomb. These are cinder, probably. Decent size. Um, blocks and bombs can really be any size. You remember the guy from the St. Helens video? Um, he was uh, saying, oh my, that's a you know, car size. He's very excited. Uh, they could, I'm sure, be bigger. Volcanoes have a monstrous amount of, of energy behind them. Um, so it's really just about uh, this flying debris uh, that's, that's going through the air. Uh, what does pyro uh, as a prefix usually mean? Or just as a word? Fire. Yeah, fire, fire, fire. And, and clastic is, is rock fragments. We haven't uh, gotten to sedimentary rocks yet. We'll talk more about the word class. So this is basically fire rock, okay? And uh, like I said, geologists categorize it, volcanologists categorize it into three uh, types or sizes, the ash, I don't have to define ash, right? Um, and then cinders, and then these giant behemoths, blocks, and bombs. Again, we have the penny here for scale. Uh, one of the things that I've been wanting to do over the years is expand this section, but the, the PowerPoint is already so gosh darn long, um, to talk about some more types of, uh, like, ash flows, uh, just pyroclastic flows, stuff like that, that just really, for whatever reason, first time around, it didn't make the cut, um, but, uh, alas, I haven't done it yet. But, as I did say, thanks to my one friend um, traveling this summer. I did get some uh, unique uh, pictures 
uh, from Pompeii. They visited Pompeii. They went on a uh, lucky enough to go on a Mediterranean cruise, and uh, typically the one you see, there's one picture they use in all the textbooks. I don't know if it's open license at this point or something, but it's this one person crouching down on the ground. But this was um, obviously in a museum, and uh, there's some really, really unique stuff that a lot of folks haven't seen before. Um, some of it is, is possibly rather hard to handle, I apologize. Uh, for instance, I'm not sure exactly that one person there, uh, if that's a child on their lap, kind of does look like another head uh, there. They really were caught off guard. They, they'd say there's, you know, Roman sentinels that just abandoned their post and they're literally buried, you know, straight up and down, still holding their sheer, sheer shields and spears. Uh, we've got a donkey or a horse here in the other picture. The preservation is, is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And what happened is that the people were, the ash was so hot, they were sort of incinerated instantly, but the, the, the ash around them acted as a molding or a case, a casing, if you would, and then it was refilled in. Um, and because of the separation or the, 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 the distinction there, um, they were able to separate them out that much easier. Uh, again, unfortunately, another child. Is that that one twice? The one sideways one? <coughs> no, no, just two wooden cases. So Pompeii with Vesuvius is by, is by far one of the best well known, but this was not a unique event um, by any means. The, what's unique about it was you know, the fact that it was preserved, and we found it, more so. And they're still working on the site, amazing site. Uh, I don't know, every so, whenever I, it catches my eye, uh, whenever new articles come out, they've recently uh, uncovered, I think it was last summer or the spring before, some uh, market booths, for lack of a better word, and um, they apparently had a way of keeping food warm. Uh, and buying it off the streets, you know, sort of like street vendors nowadays. Uh, very ornate. Uh, some of the coloring is still preserved in the in the structures. Um, and uh, I know you're going back two thousand years with this, so I, this this was really amazing stuff. All right, these are just uh, vocabulary words that don't necessarily have a home. This first one here is Nue Ardente. Anyone take French in high school? All right, well, I'm told it means glowing cloud. All right. Um, that would be a very Disneyification of it. Um, or perhaps if you were sitting on another mountain five miles away and looking at it, you, you may see a glowing cloud. I prefer a uh, flaming cloud of death. Um, it's much, much more appropriate for what this is. If you remember back, we talked about um, lava domes, right? And how they can uh, allow pressure to build up. So, um, and I also mentioned volcanic fart. This is, this is that. What happens is, um, as the pressure is building up, sometimes a little bit of it does escape. And we talked about the other day whether that is a good idea or a bad idea. Here's a great example of when it's a really bad idea. Um, these boiling hot gases, which are in, incredibly dense um, compared to air, uh, mixed oftentimes with, with some ash and whatnot. But this, this just giant cloud of gas comes out, super, super hot. Because it's so dense and heavy, it, it doesn't go into the atmosphere. It just essentially rolls down the side of the volcano. Um, it is pressurized, so it's, it's moving fast. And, and it literally obliterates, incinerates anything in its path. The fact that it's poisonous is secondary, really, um, because it, we would just be burned up uh, well before, um, you know, the gas killed you. It's like a nuclear bomb. The explosion itself is going to 
the radiation is supposed to be. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, so, Nue Ardente. All right. Um, the other one here is uh, Lahars. And it's not pluralized, it's just the word. Um, a Lahars is a volcanic mud flow. And again, something that really deserves some, some pictures here. But you remember the St. Helens video? Um, a lot of the damage was was flooding and and this this mucky muddy ash stuff everywhere um it's the before and the after picture that i want you to try to remember okay and um as any of these giant tall mountains all right what was the most of the top of this vol volcano covered with um say for you know centuries before it decided to erupt yeah, snow. Completely snow and ice covered, right? And then literally the next day they show a picture uh, and it's just, it's all gone. All that snow and ice had to go somewhere, all right? And, and basically what didn't turn into steam just got caught up in the ash and this, this horrid slurry, okay? And um, uh, another wor word from another class, but there's such a thing as a tree line, okay, where, you know, vegetation only grows so far up a, a mountain and everything and whether or not this is high enough to have one of those. Um, I think St. Helens is snow-capped all year round. Uh, so we're probably above the tree line. But anyway, once that stuff hits where the vegetation is, it picks up all the soil and, and vegetation and, and all that stuff, and it's just, just this nasty slurry that comes comes down the side of the mountain. So um, if if they didn't have a new Ardente, you certainly need to watch out for the, the Lahars. And... Um, these are almost sort of secondary uh, effects, you know, and then we saw that in St. Helens video. We didn't see people uh, being uh, necessarily killed by lava or, or ash flows or anything like that or damage even by, by that. We saw the, the flooding, okay? Um, so you, you've got a lot of things maybe you didn't necessarily associate with volcanic eruptions uh, happening here. <coughs> So I did used to have a slide with the three ash sizes. I'm sorry, the three uh, slide uh, sizes of pyroclast. I don't know what happened to it. But uh, so again, three ash, cinder, block, and bomb. Ash is smallest, block or bomb is the largest. If you didn't get that earlier, I'm not sure why there isn't a slide for it at the moment. All right, so now we are just getting into some 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 random stuff at the end uh, that didn't necessarily have a, a place to uh, a place to be. This is a uh, an image of sort of how a shield volcano formed. We, this is going way back to the beginning of lecture now. Um, and uh, you see that it is indeed layers of lava around a, well, many vent pipes. We simplified things when we made our drawing. Uh, we simplified things conversationally, okay? Um, but you see multiple vent pipes here. And again, the lava just kind of bubbles up and, and rolls to the side, giving us this nice... Um, sort of dome, you know, gentle dome, dome shape. Cinder, on the other hand, uh, I really wish they hadn't used the word lava flow here because, you know, the same book that I, I borrowed these from uh, tells us that cinders are made of pyroclasts, all right? But then they, in their diagram, they use lava flow. Um, so these are pyroclastic, either flows or, you know, things, as I gave them to you, sort of spewing out of the center, kind of like a uh, like confetti coming out really. Um, and you see, really see the difference in the cone shapes here. Uh, this here, oh, you got a question? Uh, yeah, a uh, snow-capped volcano, when it's close to erupting, will the snow start to melt before it actually erupts because of the heat, or does heat not? Yeah, that would be a, uh, a nice indicator if it did. I'm sure it varies. I'm sure it varies. I would imagine um, again, especially in this day and age, they would have picked up some other indicators of it, but, um, you know, like the, you, I think they could even like sense the lava moving and crap like that. It's, it's pretty in, intense what they can monitor these days. Um, but yeah, that would certainly be, a certainly be a thing, but much like when we talk about earthquakes later, um, one of the things that is, is consistently reliable is the, uh, the critters, um, if all the critters start acting really, really weird and or start running out of the woods and so on and so forth, you know that's typically a good sign not to go into those woods, right? Um, the problem is, is it's, it's unfortunately just kind of like moments before
they just got a little bit of a heads up on us. Um, and I have a feeling the melting uh, snow might be very much similar. But you never know. You never know. So um, this is a, a couple pictures of, of what was going on at St. Helens. We mentioned the dome. Um, and because that, that top often self, oftentimes seals itself off so great, um, the volcano finds a much weaker area to go out. Um, in this case, it was probably a good thing. Not fo great for the folks on, let's say it was the east side of the mountain that blew out. Not necessarily great for them, but if it had gone out the you know dead center top, boy, everybody would have been caught in that. Uh, but it was a very directional eruption. Um, and it also shows us perhaps a good indication as to why they lost so much elevation. All right, because when you blow out the side like this, the top obviously is going to come crumbling down. So, so yeah. Don't know what mount this is, but uh, very pretty picture of an eruption. And again, we didn't necessarily get back to gases. Um, I think I slide somehow. I don't know. It's missing some slides. But um, the gases, the, the primary gas that comes out of a volcano is uh, water vapor. Okay? <laughs> please, please, please make note of that. Uh, you heard that a little bit when we talked about outgassing when we were building the Earth uh, several chapters back. All right? And, and here we are, and we haven't mentioned it yet. That is water vapor. I mean, think about it. There's nothing really to burn there. So all that smoke is, is dirty steam, okay? Um, the water vapor comes out. The ash is there all over the place. It just sticks together. And that's what that big, thick, dark, billowing smoke um, is, okay? Uh, so what else is in there? Well, anything evil and nasty. You know, your carbon dioxide, monoxide, sulfur, sulf sulfuric gas. Yeah sulfur gases, um, <coughs> I'm not sure about methane and ammonia, but all kinds of nastiness. Um, one of the other things they associate with this is the carbon monoxide. Uh, a lot of times that will seep out of um, uh, swamps and lakes that are nearby these things. Um, and again, it's, it's a heavy gas, as you might know, from home safety. All right, it just kind of creeps along the, the ground. Um, and again, you'll see dead animals just kind of strewn all around. And if it does make it far enough to the villages, uh, oftentimes it would take just to take out villages. You'd see an entire village, uh, unfortunately, dead and no seeming reason for it. Probably spawned a lot of monster stories, but it was leaking gases. So water vapor, number one, though, by all means. This is a neat one. This is uh, basically about caldera formation. Yes, it does say Wizard Island. We'll address that in a moment. But um, we talked about a caldera, and we told you that uh, that was basically a volcano blowing itself to smithereens <coughs> in one sort of last hurrah. So we see our magma chamber down below. Uh, we see three vents coming off of this one. So presumably you know, three volcanoes or just three vents to one area. There's no scale on here. But uh, it has one great big eruption, and it doesn't necessarily empty itself out. That's the way I explained it. I just wanted to be, you know, black and white with it. But it was drained it enough that uh, the center was allowed to, to cave in, right? And sometime in the near future, not only is there no scale, there's no timeline on here. One of those vent pipes becomes active again. And uh, we see a, uh, a new volcano growing. All right, and that is indeed the case. Um, one of the uh, one of the uh, volcanoes in the Sierra Sierra Nevada, wrong mountains, uh, in the uh, active chain of volcanoes down the north the west coast of North America, um, we see a, a crater lake. All right, and again, it is a caldera. Uh, but right in the middle of uh, Crater, Crater Lake, 
Uh, there is a tiny little volcano growing. Not tiny, it's island size. Um, but imagine, if you would, the uh, the, uh, the folks that, that were there originally, and then once American explorers started coming by, um, you've got this, this great big rocky lake, and in the middle of it, at night, you see these weird flames and sparks coming off and lots of smoke billowing away from it. So they probably said there was some old wizard or, you know, whatever lived out there outside of Penang. But, uh, but it's really just another volcano growing, growing in its place. So Caldera and a specific one, we got Wizard Island. This one's a lot to process too. Um, it doesn't have any dead bodies in it, but that looks like entire villages blown up. There you go. Yeah. Yes. So while it doesn't have any dead bodies in it, 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 the longer you stare at it, you'll realize that that is indeed was indeed a uh, a village. Um, you've got the road. You've got the shoreline on the left side. You can see the docks sticking out there. Um, you see a road going through town there. And then all of those sort of that graph paper looking stuff, those those uh, for structures, houses, you know, businesses, whatever. Um, this gentleman, perhaps from a neighboring town or village, coming to look at this is a rather famous photo. This is Caribbean islands, um, and uh, not that horribly long ago, we got a picture of it. So it really can be really can be devastating. And like I said, even with the technology we have today, that doesn't necessarily give us a, a whole lot of heads up when stuff's going to happen. So after all that, I like to end on this. This is kind of pretty. Um, very shiny, smooth, little baby volcano maybe um, I love the color in it what kind of rock are we looking at uh, igneous well yes igneous definitely somebody help them out what was black oh, basalt basalt good you guys even haven't, haven't even seen a piece of basalt yet you know what it looks like that is awesome so yeah just all of that lava hardening into basalt all around it we have this active little cone in the center there. That's something Disney would make. I like that. That's pretty. Maybe see it in a mall or something. All right. So I lied. I do have one more thing to show you. This is really cool. Uh, you folks at home, if it doesn't uh, translate through the recorder very well, please, uh, by all means, check out this link. I'm actually going to plug it into the sound system so you could hear the overly, uh, whatever, overly uh, dramatic music. Where's the on button? Oh, was on already. No, thank you. This is a metabolism killer. Uh, this yeah. is a metabolism killer. And even this. Goodbye. Metabolism killer. They're all volcanoes because they'll kill you. <laughs> Very true. All right. It's funny that it remembers that I watched this already and kept it at the end. It's annoying, really. All right, let's try this again without metabolism killer guy. Oh. Can you see that? No, you still can't see that. Hold on. Hold on, folks at home. The people on campus can't see the video. So you didn't actually get to see Metabolism Guy.
All right, take three. Can you see it now? Good. said it many times thank goodness there's still mad scientists left in the world um to do crazy stuff like that and i'm sure he was just some rich dude but um i'm also sh fairly sure that he donated what research and data he did collect um you know to somebody got a hold of it so in, in the end Science. It benefited science, yeah, more so than just his YouTube video. But uh, there's actually very famous couple. They finally got a, a Netflix special made out for him, I think. Um, it's a husband and wife. They did for National Geographic and any number. If you watched um, a video, you know, and again, you guys are probably wasn't around for you, but any of these National Geographic things from like the 70s and the 80s, even the 90s. Um, there's always these these two people in tinfoil suits down by the volcano doing collecting all this data, and it was a husband and wife team, and uh, doing basically just what this guy did, but something bubbled up and over, and uh, at least they went together. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's dangerous work. It's dangerous work. I've got one of these days if I remember how to s steal clips and stuff. There's a great one out of a video uh, I used to show. This guy's walking out onto, and he's in Hawaii, so he's walking up to a, a lava flow, and he reaches in with his rock hammer, kind of just like he's getting cotton candy out, and uh, wraps some up around and sticks it in a bucket, bring it back to the lab so they can test the chemistry of it. Um, just, just neat stuff, neat stuff out there. All right, so this brings, uh, like I said, to an end the uh, conversation about volcanoes. Uh, this is a chapter in your in your textbook, okay, and. Um, if it's in there and we didn't talk about it, we, we won't be harvesting it for the test. Uh, if it's in there and we didn't talk about it and it interests you and you have some questions about it, please you know, feel free to talk to me about it. Um, 
I like I said, this is in, in my there's a lot of questions. A lot of questions on the test from this PowerPoint. Um it's, it was basically all vocabulary, you know. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're when you're studying for the test that this is on, that um, a lot of content comes out of this this PowerPoint, which is why I do hesitate to make it a little longer. <coughs> but it is lacking a few things. Where's the stuff? Where's the mouse? There's the mouse.